Hi guys! So we were in Cremona recently and I have to show you guys the Violin Making Museum. It is so amazing. Well it's Sunday here so on Monday the Violin Museum is actually closed so we're gonna head in there now. I've been there before but I really want to show you guys because it's an amazing place. The great thing is that they have a full purpose-built building now housing the Violin Museum so it's super amazing. So I've got my ticket and I'm about to go in. This is very cool. Once you got your ticket and you're inside the museum they first kind of take you on a tour of how the violin developed and it is so interesting. I even found it interesting and, and I know a lot about this. And yes, they even show you a violin making workshop. I took one look through the window and this feels a bit like work. Yeah, that just looks like work. Way tidier though. And you can see all the parts of the instrument and how the instrument is made. It's really quite interesting. Obviously, I walked through that area really fast because I really wanted to get to the room with the Amati, Stradivarius and other instruments. But if you haven't seen this, it's actually really interesting, like how all the bits and pieces on how instruments are made. But like I said, I rushed through that room to get to that darkened room with the Stradivarius, Amati, Guarnerius and other instruments. There's an Amati violin from 1566. It is one of the earliest instruments in existence. And there's an instrument by his son Girolamo. That one was made in 1616. So that was almost 50 years later. And there's an instrument by Andrea Guarneri. Then there are a few instruments by other well-known Cremonese makers. And then, of course, there is the Stolfa Guarneri violin from 1734. It's a beautiful instrument with a one-piece back. And then in that room, there are also three instruments made by Antonio Stradivarius from different periods in his life. So it's so interesting to see uh, um, the different kind of shapes of his body and how he evolved to the golden period instruments. For example, the golden bell violin that he made in 1668, he made when he was 24 years old, which was really young in his career. He, he actually made most of his instruments when he was older than 50 years. It looked very different to the instruments that he made later in his life. And then, of course, there's the Cremonese Stradivarius from 1715, which is, you know, the height of his golden period. Really amazing looking instrument. At that time, he was already 71 years old and he had uh, people working in his workshop, like his sons and others. And also he around, you know, he had really perfected all the templates and things like that to make sure that each instrument turns out exactly the same, uh, with the same kind of quality, the same kind of shape. It was kind of a bit sad seeing all those instruments in glass cases where you can't actually feel and touch and play them. But uh, I, I have seen quite a few Stradivarius instruments, uh, you know, personally. And obviously it's a lot more fulfilling and uh, um, to, to experience. But it also showed me that there are a lot of other really good instruments around that are more modern and, and more affordable, which is great. Now, the next place in the in the museum is one that uh, that you can kind of ask access to. So there's these cases with some of his tools and templates. And I basically asked the staff to show me some of the tools and templates and uh, there are so many templates, it's incredible. And the forms that he worked around and things like that. But it's it's really beautiful to see and very inspiring. But it again showed me how, how much of a perfectionist Stradivarius really was. And he really wanted to make sure that each instrument was made exactly to the same level and to the same shape. 
uh, I think he trained his makers very carefully to to really help him duplicate those instruments. So you can kind of see the, the forms that he worked around, but also those little bits of timber that he actually used to, uh, he wound strings around those bits of timber and use them as clamps because you know back then uh, the clamps had to be hand forged so it was a lot harder yeah he has a drawer of some of his tools and also some of his measuring tools also in that room further along there are some more amati instruments one of which has that incredible painting on the back which uh, i don't think amati did himself but they just look amazing uh, it has some more Stradivarius violins and uh, other famous makers. And then there is this beautifully inlaid Sturioni violin. It just looks so amazing. Uh, I love the edge work. Looks like he spent a lot of time making it. And there's the famous Stradivarius paintings and sculptures. So it just, if you go to the museum, it just gives you a really good sense, firstly, of how the instrument works, how it's made, and then uh, the amazing achievements of the master Stradivarius. You get a good feeling about all the tools and how meticulous he was and, you know, doing all the templates and forms that he worked around. So. It's quite amazing. Yeah, so then they had that amazing exhibition of a lot of the violin makers that were influenced by Stradivarius, like Fiorini, Sacconi, and a whole lot of other makers. They even had a Sterzi violin there. I made a video about his son a while ago. What an amazing place. Uh, I had a really good look at everything. It was kind of hard to leave, so I took one more look through that beautiful room with the Amati cello violins, the amazing Guarneri and Stradivarius instruments and some of the other makers. Wow, that was amazing. That was just such an amazing experience going to the Violin Making Museum. It is an amazing place and if you ever want to find out everything about violin making, definitely come here and at the same time you get to see a few Stradivarius violins uh, I had an amazing time. It's always so inspiring. And seeing all those tools that he used, like for me, that is really special. And the tools and the molds and the templates, it's just incredible. So anyway, that's it for me. I uh, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Remember to like, subscribe, and remember to hit the little bell. That way you'll find out each time I post new videos. Anyway, keep practicing, keep enjoying playing, and keep making beautiful music. All right, see you guys. Bye.